This page used to be found on a mediocre wiki site related to Disney. As you can imagine, this wiki was taken down because, well, most of its content belonged to Disney. The pages of this particular wiki are now gone, except for an interesting page that I saved at the time of my visit. I heard how Disney loves to try and silence things they don't want anyone to know about. And after reading about this synopsis, I can't say I blame them entirely for that decision. I only hope that this page stays up. Mickey's Best Friend is a controversial 10-minute cartoon that was shown in theaters on November 15, 1929. It was later banned and isn't allowed to be shown again due to its history of kids requiring constant attention after viewing its content. The cartoon was animated by UB Works, with music composed by Carl Stalling. It isn't even available to anyone who wants to complete their collection of classic Mickey cartoons. It was originally intended to be a Halloween-related short which revolved around Mickey and Eustace and anthropomorphic dog character. Walt at the time thought kids were getting dumbed down by their shorts, and that they were mature enough to handle what he wanted to show them. Mickey is driving to his workplace in his car. Along the way, it breaks down due to an engine problem, and he gets out to check it. When Mickey finds out it's beyond repair, he goes into a depression, until Eustace arrives and helps out by fixing the problem. Mickey is relieved and introduces himself. After getting Eustace's name, Mickey invites him to go with him somewhere. Eustace asks Mickey if he's supposed to be somewhere, but Mickey lies to him and decides to skip work. The two arrive in a cafe where the owner spots Mickey and gives him a stern look. He walks up and rudely asks Mickey what he wants. After ordering, the sheriff, Pete, enters and confronts Mickey, demanding that he pays off his late rent. Mickey, on the verge of a breakdown, is pitied by Eustace, who decides to pay off Mickey's entire debt. The sheriff laughs and warns Eustace, telling him that Mickey will only cause him trouble before leaving the scene. Mickey, relieved that he's off the hook, hugs Eustace in joy. Mickey leaves the cafe with Eustace and begins to introduce his new friend to the local residents through a bunch of different scenes. They don't care, and they walk off. The last resident they speak to begins to chuckle for a bit and warns Eustace that he should be careful about that mouse. Eustace tries to get an explanation on why this person holds a grudge but the resident is nowhere to be seen after his warning. Eustace asks Mickey why he's smiling after the reception he got, and Mickey admits to Eustace that he hasn't had friends before, and that Eustace is his first pal. Eustace feels bad and seems to be hiding something with a guilty expression. Mickey and Eustace, in a bunch of quick scenes, stop by a theater, play a game, and go atop a mountain viewing the scenery. Afterward, Mickey shows Eustace his home in hopes that he'll live with him. It's here where Eustace starts feeling bad for the mouse, but finally admits that he has to leave. Mickey is in shock, and assumes that it's a betrayal like all of the other relationships he's had. Eustace tells Mickey that he isn't pleased by the town, and especially the residents, and is going to search elsewhere. He apologizes to Mickey and gives a few encouraging words before finally heading out the door. Mickey rushes and grabs Eustace by the leg and pleads to stay. But Eustace shakes his head. Mickey decides that he can't lose his only friend. And he knocks him out with a rock that he's found on the ground. The next scene shows Mickey walking down the stairs to his basement. He turns on the lights, where Eustace is tied into an operating table. Eustace is still unconscious. Mickey begins to sob and act apologetic. He talks to Eustace through his state, telling him that it has to be this way. He constantly shouts out that he can't be alone anymore, and finally, he grabs a knife from under the operating table and begins to work on him from off screen. After Eustace finally awakens, it's revealed that he's no longer anthropomorphic, but is in fact a real dog. He begins to freak out and can only make barks. During the freak out, switches to first-person mode, and we see Mickey entering the room. Eustace no longer seems scared the moment that he sets eyes on Mickey. Through the mouse, 
He feels like he needs Mickey and finally pounces and licks him. Mickey tells Eustace that nobody will ever know about this and how it will be their eternal secret. He tells Eustace that he'll be known as Pluto until they part. The scene switches to Mickey's home and zooms out. The sheriff's laughter is heard along with the residents who had warned Eustace about Mickey in the first place. While Disney was inspired to make a Halloween-themed short of the beloved mouse, characters were created and made up on the spot, which would later become official characters. The owner of the cafe would later become Daisy Duck, and the resident attempting to warn Eustace would later become Goofy, who supposedly looked a lot like Eustace's design. Pluto would also become a recurring character, but any connection to Eustace isn't mentioned. Work felt disgusted during the final portion of the cartoon, and demanded that the operation scene would get censored. Walt had no choice but to give in to their demands. Production of the cartoon was delayed to many of the workers and works himself feeling unease from Eustace after reading the script. Production was very slow due to the employees not wanting to really finish this cartoon. There was also an undisclosed budget, which could be due to the animators demanding a higher pay for making something out of their comfort zone, especially for a kid's cartoon. It took a few months to finish the project. A lot of outrage and controversy stirred after the cartoon finally got released to theaters. It was the opposite of what Walt wanted. People claimed that their children couldn't sleep at night. They would get nightmares involving getting operated on by Mickey Mouse. It would even cause children who were very young to require constant attention because, well, they didn't want to be left alone, especially at night. Due to this, parents wanted to press charges over the content. Walt finally decided to destroy any copy of the cartoon that he would come across in an attempt to hide his failures. Few have pointed out how Hustis looks similar to Goofy. Some have said that Hustis's features would later be given to the more clumsy Goofy. While there's no connections to Hustis in future cartoons, Mickey gets extremely worried when Pluto runs off or gets lost, and will even try to risk his life in order to save his, quote, best friend. This is the only connection from Mickey's best friend, at least any that are shown in other cartoons. There used to be a particular site that showed screenshots of the short Mickey's Best Friend, but it no longer is accessible. The site can no longer be found, and it seems to have vanished entirely. Most of the writers of this short are now deceased due to old age, but back when they were around, they never wanted any mention of the cartoon itself. Some have said that this is due to guilt. Hey there kids, it's me, Mr. Creepypasta, and once again I just wanted to tell you thank you so much for watching tonight's video. I've been under a really weird Disney obsession lately, I've been making Disney stuff for VR chat, so this was right up my alley. Uh, that being said, also I want to remind you guys about No Brand Con, that's going to be the end of this month, March 29th through the 31st. It's going to be in the Wisconsin Dells, and you can always go over to nobrandcon.org to find out more. I'm going to be there doing a couple of game show panels, telling a couple of scary stories, and in general having a lot of fun with you guys, so I'd love to see you there. And if you'd like to support the channel, you can always check us out at patreon.com slash mrcreepypasta. And also, uh, we're a podcast, uh, Spotify, uh, and on Apple, and on uh, Google Play, and uh, I guess anywhere else that you can be able to find a podcast at. But yes, uh, thank you guys again for listening and I seriously, seriously mean this when I say sweet dreams. <laughs>